Hello my castaways, and welcome back to another Stranded Deep speed run. It's been a while since we've had one of these on the channel, and that's because it's getting a little bit more difficult to come by those world record times for the any percent normal difficulty fixed seed speed run. So what I've decided to do is go ahead and fill in some of those other empty slots on the speed run categories, and what we're going to be doing today is the random world speed run. So, what you would normally do whenever you're doing a speedrun is pick out a world from the cartographer and basically if it looks good enough, like it has the boss locations and the ending ship all in one cluster, you'll go into it and you'll memorize where everything is from the potatoes to the shipwrecks to the bosses and the ending ship, and then you'll run that world over and over until you get the time down to, well, a record or just your personal best, I suppose. However, with a random world run, I have no idea where any of that stuff is. I am starting from complete scratch, and I basically have to figure all that out on the go. So this won't be nearly as fast as a normal speedrun, or what I'd like to think of as a normal speedrun, since that's the most played category by far. However, it's definitely going to be an interesting one. Now, if you've never seen one of my speedruns, you're going to very quickly wonder what the hell is going on, why I'm moving so fast, and why I'm jumping so high. So, basically, my whole thing is that I have an action stacking glitch that allows me to stack forward inputs and propels myself at super speeds. I'm more than happy to share how to do this glitch with anyone, I just don't post it publicly or talk about it on my videos so that the devs don't patch it out and ruin our ability to speedrun. Now, uh, another side effect of this is that whenever, well, whenever you're playing without this glitch, if you jump from just below the water, you actually gain just like a, a foot or so of height above the water. Now, whenever you're doing this while speed walking, your stacked inputs get translated into height above the water. See, so like just right there. So I don't know how many stacks I've accumulated whenever I'm doing this glitch. It's basically just how fast I can utilize the hardware that allows me to do this glitch. And so because of that, I have no idea how high up in the water I'm going to go. Uh, sometimes it's yeah, a reasonable amount, you know, reasonable within this glitch, not reasonable within this game, uh, like that one was. Or sometimes it's insanely high up. I've actually gone above the skybox on this. So, yeah, that's the, uh, the intro to speed walking and swim jumping. And if you want to know how to do that, you can message me on any of the social media links in the description of this video, and I'll be happy to share. It's not... Uh, scripting or changing the game in any way, it's a legitimate glitch. Anyone on PC can do this seconds after downloading the game. Alright, now that that's over, let's get into the run. So, uh, yeah, we've been going for a couple minutes now, but basically it's the same strategy as any other Stranded Deep speed run. We're going to go around and collect up all the stuff that we can get on this beginning island, starting with the wrecks, getting the crates out, uh, getting all the crap out of those crates, and then organizing them with the stuff that we need. What we're going to need is food and water for the ending ship, 10 servings of food, 10 servings of water, the easiest of which is to um, make coconut flasks and split coconuts in half for your food and water. So all we really need is coconuts and lashings for those. Now, we're going to need some fuel cans so we can distill our fuel, and we're also going to need potatoes to make uh, that fuel from. Now, like I said earlier, I have no idea where the potatoes are, so we're basically going to be searching around for potatoes um, for the first good bit, looking for bosses on the way. And you're going to see a lot of me searching off on the horizon, whether I'm on these islands or jumping up in the air like this, uh, looking off on the horizons for boss locations, because, like I said, I have no idea where those are either. So we're going to be trying to see, well, we're going to be trying to see all three, but you can only really see Meg and Luska. Luska is a giant buoy on the horizon. Sometimes it lights up at night, making it actually pretty easy to see. And Meg is kind of a, a white smudge, but it's, it's really static there in the water, so it also is pretty easy to see. However, the final boss, well, not the final boss, just, you know, one of the bosses, the Great Abia, his boss location is just basically two little spears or sticks uh, poking out of the water. And sometimes even when you're right in front of it, it's really difficult to see. So my plan is, man, I almost said that snake. My plan is uh, basically just to try and stumble upon it. Now I've tried probably, I've tried this speed run probably six, seven, eight times by now, and every time, that's the one that gets me. I can always find all the potatoes, gas cans, everything else I need, Meg and Luska, and the ending ship, but every single time, it's always finding the avia. It's just so damn difficult.
So we're not really going to have to worry about finding the ending ship. Uh, I expect, uh, or at least whenever I started this run, I know now because I'm doing the commentary after the fact, but whenever I started this run, I expect it would be, probably be going pretty much all over the map unless we got really lucky and everything was in just a really nice tight cluster. And even that's not necessarily a guarantee because, like I said, that Avia location is so hard to see, I might blow right past it and never even realize it's right next to, you know, maybe the ending ship, maybe another boss. trying to get all the crap out of the crates. We don't need half of this stuff. We'll need the label maker, but pretty much any engine parts and anything that's not gas cans or plank scrap or rations, we're just gonna throw out. I have a general crate strategy that I'm not really gonna go over here. If you're interested in it, you can find it in pretty much any of my last like six or seven speed runs. Um, it's all been <laughs> pretty tight in the last couple months uh, trying to do these. But anyways, we have four different crates and, well, I guess we're going to accumulate quite a few more because we're going to need more carrying capacity for this run. But the general strategy is that we have four or five crates that we stick all of our gas components in, which takes about two crates, uh, one crate for food, and then a couple crates for spears and, oh, well, one crate for spears, one crate for uh, just my general stuff, like my uh, rations and compass bandages, any air cans I find and maybe the label maker. Now I especially need to make sure that I have all the spears ready to go because not knowing where the bosses are, if I happen to run across one whenever I'm going from one island to the other, I need to have weapons on me to make sure that I can actually kill them. Um, not every boss is as easy to kill with just the axe. Well, I guess that's not really true. We can kill any of the bosses with the axes, or with the axe, but Luska is a whole lot easier if you have spears. So pretty much all of these are just for him. And we're also making sure that we have a high enough crafting level to be able to make antidote. It's the same situation with the spears as the antidote. We don't want to be poisoned, leaving an island, and then coming across the boss and having to fight it while we're poisoned. So we need to make sure we have the ability to make that before we even leave. Now I've been doing some attempts on some, you know, other speedruns like the normal difficulty, uh, the classic one, the normal difficulty fixed seed, any percent speedrun, but it's just so damn hard to get a the perfect RNG and then do everything perfectly if you get the perfect RNG. I have not been able to beat a Gork's time, and I haven't done as many attempts as I would have in the past uh, after he beat beaten my time, given the time it's been since he's done that. But, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's really difficult, so I'm deciding to do these for a little while, get some practice, try and hone my method, and uh, shake a little bit of the rust off, because I took kind of a break in between uh, the last one that I did and when he beat my run, so we'll get there, though. We're just looking around for potatoes now. And more recently in Stranded Deep speedrun news, I suppose, we have a couple new contenders for a couple different categories of speedrun. So first off, we have Folky30, and uh, him and his buddy have been doing a whole bunch of co-op speedruns, both normal, hard, and glitchless. So if you want to go check out his runs, you can find links to them on the speedrun.com page. And he's also been doing some fire... Oh man, I got bit up by that shark. 
Uh, I did not see him coming. But uh, Folky30 has also been doing some fire percent runs too, and he currently holds the third place. Speaking of fire percent, we also have Lyprin64 who claimed the first place, but then uh, a couple days after I went ahead and reclaimed that first place, so he's now in second. And then lastly, we have Kranich, which is this Russian gamer who, I guess, accidentally uh, beat my first place record for the Moss, the Moss, Meg Boss Kill time, excuse me. And uh, he just recently submitted one, I think, for the Abia, but, uh, well, he put the wrong link in the video, so uh, I had to deny the run. But I'm sure he actually has it. He, you know, since the first one was legit. So, in a couple days, that link should be up there, too. Alright. I think we're... I was gonna say, I think we're about ready to get going, but I don't think that's actually the case. Had to make a bandage to heal myself from that shark attack out of nowhere. I just really didn't think he was gonna clip me the way he did. Alright, yeah, I think we are actually ready to go off to the next island. Well, hopefully the next island. Actually, no, not hopefully the next island. Hopefully a boss, and then the next island. But I know for a fact that's not going to be the case on this, this transition, I suppose. Alright, we got a tanker on this island. That's good for crates and finding jerry cans. So yeah, uh, this is a really good example of how I have no idea how high I'm going to go whenever I swim jump. Um, yeah, I mean, I've gone so high up in the air before swim jumping, it's taken me a full 30 seconds to fall back down. And uh, this right here is a really handy trick for getting up to the top of those crow's nests. nests. The ladders that go up to them are really buggy, and you can very commonly get stuck halfway up them, either having to jump off the ladder and either hurt yourself or break your leg, or basically like kind of glitch jump up them where you jump off and then latch back on, but you can't actually move, and you have to basically just keep on doing the same thing to the top. Needless to say, tightrope walking to the top is a whole lot easier. <laughs> Need that spyglass so we can see the boss locations, that'll definitely help. And there's our first jerry can. Now I've got a little bit too much stuff and that's kind of a, a plague of these types of runs because I need a little bit more things than I would for a normal run uh, because I'm not because I'm planning on probably ending up on an island somewhere in the dark when I don't want to be there, I definitely want that flare gun, or at least one flare gun. And uh, just kind of struggling around the inventory problems of speedruns in general at this point. And there's a second jerry can. So really, that's kind of... And here's the third. I was about to say I only really need two because I can distill gas. If I'm planning on having these on the ending ship, I can distill gas in one of them, use the other one to carry gas up to it, uh, the plane, and then empty it and refill it and do the same thing over. But having uh, an extra jerry can, definitely not a bad thing. That is an absolute must on an any percent normal difficulty fixed seed speed run. Now those um, flares from the flare gun will persist for, I think, you know, 12 in-game hours, basically half a day. So even though the sun's going down and that was a bit early to pop those, um, sleeping doesn't seem to upset that timer. So whenever I wake up in the morning, it will more than likely be dark just because of how bad my RNG is. And uh, we'll still have light.
That's all the plank scrap we'll need for the fuel stills. And we're going to go ahead and knock this guy out since uh, it's probably going to be more of a problem than a help. Trying to take it slow, walking around this island just to see if I can see any potatoes. These uh, islands with the giant rocks on them are definitely the worst islands to try and get potatoes on just because of the sheer amount of foliage and the fact that, well, a lot of times I feel like those potatoes end up spawning inside the rocks or other terrain rocks that are, that are around since that happens so much on the small islands with the bushes. So uh, there's a whole lot more space being taken up by those cliffs on these islands than on smaller islands. And here's our boar bud. And you can tell that those things don't really do all that much damage. Like, I could get hit by them, you know, over 12 times and still be alive, assuming I'm not, like, poisoned or something. And that's not really a problem in this run, because I'm going to have plenty of time to heal back up unless I stumble upon a boss location right in the morning, like, first thing. And even then, I'll probably still be full health by the time I actually wake up if I have full food and water. On a normal speed run, that is not the case. Um, even having a little bit of health knocked down, that can really screw you up since you have very little time in between boss kills and... Well, just in between boss kills. I've got a handful of new tricks for um, the normal difficulty fix seed speed run, and uh, one of them involves doing this. And I've learned a way to basically get the shelter made probably a good 15, 20 seconds faster. And then, uh, well, the other one I'm not going to reveal until it shows up on a speed run, so you'll just have to wait. I will give you a hint though, it has something to do with the crafting XP and how fast I will be able to make the fuel still. And it looks like the flare gun paid off since it's pretty damn dark now. <laughs> still super early in the morning. And I think we're just picking up the rest of the coconuts that we're going to need for the flasks and food. Get everything made, get some of the crafting XP out of the way. And it's nighttime, so it doesn't really make sense to go, you know, to another island where I don't have any light sources already active. And I have a whole lot lower chance to find boss locations in the dark, so we're just going to take care of things that we can right now. Maybe those flares are upset by sleeping. I'm not 100% sure, but that did seem a little early. Oh, that's right, but we got another one. No worries. I've been trying to see if there's a way I can use one of those in the boss locations in um, a normal any percent speed run but it doesn't appear that those lights will be active underneath the water. Even if you shoot them just above the water, it still doesn't produce a significant amount of light underneath the water, which is basically what I need it for to be able to kill Luska or Meg or Avia. I was thinking that I'd pick up the cloth to have an extra bandage on me, but I mean, considering I had the speed walking, even if I do get bitten, I have a bandage in my stuff, 
and if I have two of them, then I won't be able to switch to a bandage if my inventory is full, so I'm just going to keep it how it is. And if I do end up using up that bandage and getting bitten again, I can go find a lashing and cloth on another island very, very quickly. A lot of the potatoes on these islands like to hide in these little ditches, and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it seems like it makes it harder to find them. And there's an early hunt hunter level, so we'll do an extra 8% damage on the bosses whenever you fight them. That's what hunter levels does, gives you an extra 8% per level for the damage done on any creature. Now, if I had been thinking objectively about how I should be approaching this, I would have gotten out of here by now and uh, saved collecting the rest of those coconuts for another island, probably when I'm there in the dark again, since uh, light is pretty precious to find those bosses. Alright, taking a peek for these bosses. And there we go, poisoning, yeah. It's not a speed run if I don't get poisoned, right? <laughs> It seems like there are a whole lot of tankers on this world, and that kind of threw me off because I. It seemed like every other island there was a tanker, and it made me keep on thinking it was the same island off in the distance. Um, even then, I'm still attempting to go around this world in kind of a circle so we can try and hit up any open areas. Storms can be both beneficial and hurtful uh, with these types of runs since. Like the Luska buoy, it'll kind of bob back and forth and stay on the water level, or at least mostly stay on the water level. 
but the both the MIG and the Avia locations, they're static structures that don't move at all in the water. So for the MIG structure, um, sometimes you can see it just like hanging out like above the surface of the water, and it's like, it looks really weird, but uh, it makes spotting it really easy. And uh, kind of the same thing for the Avia's location, but then on the other hand, if the water is going over those things, then you have basically no chance of seeing them. So it's uh, kind of just like, like the last island when we are there in the dark, we're just going to do some stuff here if we can. <clears throat> now I do a little bit of a screw up here and I actually start making the fires for the fuel stills, thinking that I have enough potatoes and trying to like, kind of wait out the time here. But uh, yeah. <laughs> a stupid decision and luckily I only made the fires I didn't end up using like a gas can or something and then having to tear it down and potentially not getting everything back out of it and we got our potato all right for the record if any of you aren't aware of this, that is not how potatoes grow whatsoever. Potatoes grow underneath the ground. Yeah, so. I mean, I get the, uh, I get the reason behind it. They don't want you to have to, like, dig or anything in this, uh, game. And I'm pretty sure if they gave us a way to dig, it would just, you know, end up with a lot of people doing a bunch of silly shit. Uh, not that I wouldn't have fun with it. But, uh, yeah, so I know why they put the potatoes up there. It's just, it's always funny to me, um, I'm a botanist, so when I see that, I'm kind of just like, all right, yep, potatoes above the ground. Makes sense. Now, we actually have, like, almost too many rations, and I actually played around with using those as the food component for uh, escaping, which a Gork likes to do a lot in his speed runs, but I kind of... I find it just easier to not have to count them and just collect up potatoes. I mean, not potatoes, God. Definitely not potatoes, coconuts. Yeah, that's what I meant. I was actually messing around with, uh, <clears throat> well, something for a project. Uh, for a later video, and I came across the, like, dev, um, console's title for rations, and it's actually called a can of beans, so I don't know if that's, like, oh, it's a can of beans, like, what they just decided to colloquial qual colloquially qual- oh my god, it, like they just decided to call it, but, uh, maybe there used to be a can of beans in this game? I don't know, anyone who's been playing longer than I have, which is, like, about two, two and a half years now, let me know if you uh, remember there being a can of beans in the game, because, uh, I don't know, I just find that interesting. Colloquially called it. See, I can get it right. Kind of just killing time here now. Um, it's a bit of a shame. It's a, a total waste of time to be hanging out here. It's just I'm not willing to risk uh, traveling the distance and missing boss locations, especially since I haven't been all over this, you know, map before. I don't really even generally know where things are. So I, all I really know is that the bosses are not back behind me. <laughs> And we got a couple extra bandages. Well, one extra bandage. Ooh, that was such a smooth swim jump. Gosh, that was nice.
And here we go, I'm starting to make fires, even though I shouldn't be at all. And then very quickly realizing I don't have any potatoes. <laughs> And it seems like the rain's clearing up anyways, so we're just going to collect up the sticks that I uh, wasted right there and uh, get the hell out of here. Alright, we're cleared to go. I'm trying not to just keep on going to um, like the next island over or anything like that uh, so I can cross these large expanses of water since that's likely to be where the bosses are. And I think I might have seen something, if I remember correctly what's happening in the run, I think I might have seen the Meg location off over here somewhere. And we're going to be ending up doing a whole lot of these dolphin dives where we just pop up out of the water just to get a good vantage point to see everything from and then keep on repeating. I guess this wasn't the Meg. We got some more potatoes. Just trying to take another quick look around, see if we can spot any out in the open ones. Now there's a very good chance we're missing potatoes that are hidden in these bushes, but I don't have the time to go looking around for them because in a normal speed run, what I'll end up doing before I do a run when I'm scouting out the world is I'll, I will, for like a good half hour, 40 minutes, I will scour the starting island and whatever islands are on my path just to make sure I haven't missed any potatoes whatsoever. Definitely don't have that time now. And hey, we got a survivor shelter. That's nice. It's not really going to do anything for us. There might be some lashings over there we could use, but besides that, it's uh, not much of a help. I think that's enough potato scouting. Now this was actually a mistake coming up here because so whenever I swim jump the game thinks that my character is just above the water so whenever I fall back down um, assuming the last place I was touching was the surface of the water, the game just thinks that I'm still right above the water that whole time, so I don't receive fall damage. However, if I jump up to a high structure like a mast of a ship or the top of a tree or the top of a cliff and then fall back down to the ground, the game knows very well that I am not just above the water and it would definitely give me fall damage. And that was a lucky potato right there, but you can see how much more difficult it is to find potatoes on these islands. That's a weird looking tree. Uh, how much more difficult it is to find potatoes on these islands just because of the dangers and the foliage and the weird shape of it.
doesn't look good. And poison again, man. <laughs> I think that's it, Speedy. Oh, no, it's getting me again, man. I <laughs> This one kept on getting me. I thought it was a boss location, but I think that's just a really far out ship. Maybe not. Maybe I'm fooling myself again on top of fooling myself before. Nope, yep, just a ship. Hmm. I should have known, it was too close to an island. Alright man, we're getting there, one potato at a time. I think we only need one or two more right now. And see here's yet another tanker. And you can tell we haven't been to this one yet since it's one of the big island islands and it's uh, one of the weird ones that doesn't have a giant central rock, which I don't know if is a new thing or just something that I hadn't come across very regularly in my uh, play of the game, but I feel like I've only found like one island like this. I almost feel like it's a glitch, but I, I guess we can't know. I think I actually missed a potato back there. But there's so many creepy crawlies running around trying to nibble on me that, uh... No wonder I missed it. Now, it's actually easier to see boss locations that are in either the rising or the setting sun just because it creates such a contrast against the location. So uh, if I can use those times to actually look at the horizon, those might actually help me spot the avia location if it renders in uh, at the distance that I'm looking at it from. I think that might be the last one we need. Yeah, that's... Ah. no. Okay, yeah, we still need two more potatoes. He's getting overzealous about my vodka.
I decided to take another scan around the island for a potato with this light in my hand. Sometimes it could be easier to see them because the light kind of makes that bald face, the bald brown face of the potato kind of stand out against the green. And uh, I guess the yellowish light of the day or morning or dusk is uh, makes it more difficult to see. No, you fool. Use the trick you learned. Ah. I don't have to do this. I'm doing extra work. It's wasting time. Found a way to skip it. And we actually woke up at a really decent time for uh, a run. This is like perfect for a normal speed run. Like if I had to get out of here and go kill like the Abia or Meg or something, this would be great. I guess I do have to go do that, but, uh, yeah. I feel like I would get so hopeful that we're about to see something, or that I think I see something, and then of course I am seeing it right now as I... <laughs> talking about it but I would get so hopeful that I would trick myself into thinking that I saw something and like, go back and look at it again but didn't really need to do that when you see in the locations really stand out and I'm just now realizing that I probably need to uh, manage my inventory a bit more since I only have Enough slots in my inventory for 12 spears. That's not gonna. That's not gonna work out very well with Luska. Now, since I'm leaving all this stuff here, I need to make sure I can very exactly find my way back. So that's uh, one of the reasons I got the compass out, so I can mark which direction this boss location is and then go the opposite direction of that to find my way back. And there we go. I do love those pull-up bars in this buoy because you can just whip right into it at full speed and it'll stop you like that. Gotta put a spear in my hand because if I fill up my inventory with spears without a spear in my hand, then I can't switch to it. So we're just going to swim underneath the buoy chain here and uh, wait till he starts discoing above us in circles and chuck a whole bunch of spears at him. When we run out, we're going to go up and get the rest of them. And uh, we're going to run out of spears entirely, and we'll either have to get them back out of him or just chop them up with the axe.
And this will happen every now and then where you bring him down to zero health and he just doesn't die. You gotta put a couple more traps in him. And I think it has something to do with like whenever his name and health disappear off the screen or, and you like hit him or something like that. But then again, on the other side of that, sometimes you don't have to hit them all the way down to their full health either. They'll die before they're supposed to. So, kind of just a toss up. All right, well, that's the first one down. And we'll just do, uh, oh no, that's right, we gotta go get back and uh, get our crates. Now, the smart thing to do right there, well, all right, actually, I, <laughs> so what happened when I popped up right there was I hit a rendering boundary of the island, and uh, I guess my character, my best guess is that my character is not able to go forward anymore, so he just goes up. Um, yeah, but what I was saying is that uh, it would have been good for me to take a scan around uh, off of that boss location just to see if there's another one close by, because, I don't know, just sometimes it feels like they tend to stick together. Ooh, man, that's, that's a high one. But we get a nice good view, and I don't even know if some of the boss locations will render in if I'm that high, but I definitely at least get a nice view of the layout of the islands, if I can remember it that quick. And not only that, it's also a good way to avoid getting poisoned by stuff whenever you're coming into an island, because, you know, very easy to hit a sea snake, um, lionfish, or starfish whenever you're swimming right through the top of the water. So, kind of just safer to go at it from above. Okay, so we only need one more potato. And we need one more antidote. Those far off waves always get me, especially when there's like a couple that look like they're in the same spot because it kind of looks like the Meg location. Yep, one last potato, and it was a lucky one, too. We just, just stumbled across that one. So that should be all we need. We're good to make gas, but we got to still find the two boss locations in the ending ship.
Now, the one thing that I fear in these runs is that the boss locations will be on the very outer edge of the world. That way, um, there's no like islands around it to, I guess, give me like a reference point. Because uh, if I if I don't see any reason to go off in like locations where there might be a boss location, uh, it's not likely I'm going to go there. It's basically kind of just in between islands where I'm going to see boss locations. And, I mean, I might get lucky and see one on the outside ring, but uh, if it's the Abia, like total loss just basically can't even do the run because I'll just have to stumble across it Oh, right here, yeah, just got hit by a shark. So, uh, a couple times in the past, and actually just like two days ago, um, well, I guess, <laughs> while well, I'm recording this, but it probably will be more than that, whenever this goes up on YouTube, uh, someone was asking me why I don't get hit by sharks, and uh, the answer to that most of the time is that I'm just going too damn fast. Like, they're, the AI hit detection isn't even all that good in this game in the first place. Like, you can swim without using glitches and dodge sharks, pretty consistently and sometimes they'll they'll get you like with a good hit but uh yeah that i just went like right into a shark nose or mouth i guess and uh yeah i just like got slammed by a shark at full speed so that does happen every now and then You can see how it's getting fuzzy out there. That's the edge of the world we're hitting. Real hard to see that until you're right up against it. So yeah, kind of just on the rat race to find these locations now, which basically means we're going to have to take some rings around the edge of the map and uh, make sure we hit everything we can. Uh, like I said, hoping the Abia is not on the very, very edge of the map. And sometimes when you're just looking off in the distance, it looks like it's the edge of the map. And it was really kind of screwing with me because I was, there were a couple times where I thought I was hit, about to hit the edge of the map and it was really just a very huge open expanse and uh, just needed to cross it. But hey, there's our ending ship. Awesome. So we're just going to be doing some looks around here to see if we can see any boss locations real quick. But uh, we're going to head up, uh, head over here and set up these fuel stills. And then that way the gas will just be ready when we get back and we don't have to worry about it. Drop off our all of our stuff that we don't need. So basically just going to be taking spears and uh, compass, you know, uh, bandages and, oh my gosh, what's it called? Spyglass. Ah.
This is one of those things I really wish that it would uh, I could set it to pop up in my quick crafting wheel whenever I have all the components. Like, need that for a speedrun sometimes. It slows me down after I scroll through the menu. Alright, now we pretty much have everything taken care of except for the Meg and the Abia. And yeah, we just gotta find the those two, and we have everything else here ready to go on this island. So yeah, and we got an extra gas can, so we don't even have to tear down another uh, one of the fuel stills to get the gas can back out of it. Not that that's really important. It's a tiny save in time, but hey, I'll take it. I can't remember what I'm looking around for here. Something in a crate, but I. Uh, I can't remember what it was. Might as well make those into spears. Those are just extras in case I do something silly like, I don't know end up making some of my sticks into spears before I make the fuel still. Now one very important thing that I had to do here was make sure I knew exactly how to get back to that ending ship and uh, see me pulling out my compass and looking around here uh, just trying to make sure I know that there is some direction so I th I'm thinking it's in the northwest area of the map I'm that could just be dependent on what island I'm on but uh, <laughs> I know if I go towards the northwest area and then go around the island in a or the world in a clockwise manner I'll find it because that's how I found it in the first time for the first place and we'll just take a scan around for some boss locations while the sun's setting because it makes it so much easier to see them Alright, officially bedtime, so now we can sleep. I always think it's a little silly that you can't uh, sleep, you know, while it's, like, dusky. I mean, I get the the reason for the mechanic, so you can't just, like, sleep during the day and skip all the hard stuff that might kill you. Um, but, yeah. Whoa, that was a weird turn. All right, this is super good light for finding boss locations. Nope, that's just the ending ship. 
Yeah, I was thinking it was, uh, I thought I saw something again, but just, uh, just more waves. Sneaky fucking waves. We don't need islands. We'll just jump over them. <laughs> Some Superman shit right there. There we go. Finally. <laughs> All right, let's go make sushi. Okay, not a good start. <laughs> Got hit right off the bat. At least she didn't uh, chomp me and make me bleed. And we gotta make sure we don't get too far away from this uh, dead whale here, or else she'll disappear and respawn with full health. Same for any boss. It's what cost me the world record on my <laughs> last speed run was I didn't kill Lu- or I went off the boss location on Luska, cost me like a full three minutes. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't going off that location. It'd be a terrible time to reset her. There we go. Two bosses down, one to go. So now, uh, with how difficult it is to see the actual Avia location, my plan is basically just to stumble upon it. And I was really hoping it would have happened before now, but luckily it happens pretty quick here. And uh, it was such a surprise at the time, because I was like, like, while it happened, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should just give up. It seems like it's taking too long. I don't want this to go on too long. You know, hour and a half speed run. Come on, I can do better than that. And then I just hit it, and I actually gasped. I was like, oh, man. <laughs>
Now, this is one of those areas that really screwed me up. It was uh, like a really wide open expanse, and I think that's why... Oh, wait, nope, that's the edge of the map. All right, never mind. I'm thinking of a different area. Now I'm hoping with these dolphin dives that I can kind of see like, so the ABS location isn't just two sticks, it's like a whole sunken ship, and I'm sure plenty of you know that, but for those of you who don't, it's uh, like a little, the I don't even know what it is, like the antenna station, I think, uh, that's just barely beneath the water, and like there's a surface you can stand on, and sometimes that sticks over the water, and even if it doesn't, sometimes if uh, you have a high enough vantage point, you can see it through the water, and that's kind of what I'm hoping I'll see, but... Uh, yeah, still pretty difficult to find. That or I'm hoping I'll just like jump over it and all of a sudden the words, the Great Avia, will appear on my screen and I'll realize I'm literally, you know, hundreds of feet above the location and I can just stop. That would be great. There it is. Yeah. I didn't even see it in the run, I don't think, until I... Yeah, okay, no, I did see it. But yeah, I gasped right there. I was like, holy shit, all right, we're doing it. This is the run, baby. We did it. Because, like, at this point, I don't care. If he bites me, I got two bandages, I'm fine. Well, <laughs> actually, that's not true. Sometimes the Abia can one-hit you. Um, I don't know if it's a glitch or if that's an intended mechanic, but when he's really, really low on health, um, and especially if you don't have full health, but he can take you down from basically full health to nothing and uh, yeah I'm determined to not let that happen though also I feel like his hit detection is like probably the least accurate of the three bosses I mean Luska's is just spot on with those tentacles and Meg can surprise you sometimes but he Unless he starts, like, glitching through the ship or something, which is, you know, that's, everything's out the bag there. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to, like, dodge him by going left and right or up and down, even without the speed walking glitch. And of course, we got to stay close to this location. This one's a bit easier to tell, though, since there's a giant rock that the ship is sitting on that basically marks, you know, the entire area. You can go a little bit further than the edge of it, but uh, yeah, it's a huge enough area. You don't really have to worry about it. All right, I don't even care about getting spears back or anything. We're just off to the races, man. I am going to that ship as fast as I can. Which is not as fast as I could because I get a little lost, but it's still pretty quick. Hey, there's another shark. See, it happens all the time. I get hit. Just, well, it doesn't happen all the time. But it does happen. Another interesting quirk of the speed walking and swim jumping 
glitches is that you can't um, start or cancel your sprinting when you're in midair. So you have to, if you're going to maintain your sprint bar and make sure it doesn't run out of uh, energy completely and go red, you basically have to make sure you um, stop it while you're on the ground or in the water. I was just wanting to go west to make sure I hit this wall, and then I'm going to head uh, a little bit, well, I'm going to head a little east, so I'm not right up against the wall, and then I'm going to head north. Just in case I was seeing the ship from a weird angle, and I think I was, because uh, it takes me a little while to get there, longer than I expected. Alright, there we go. Uh, and our fuel should be done by now since we slept after making the fuel stills yesterday and then spent all that time looking for bosses and killing them. However, what I don't realize is that because the I'm going so fast and the ending ramp hasn't rendered in there, neither has any of the stuff in my boxes. Now I can see the fuel in these fuel stills, but I can't see any jerry cans or coconuts or sticks, and I am absolutely freaking out right now because I'm like, no, it all disappeared, what happened? <laughs> like, But uh, then it does that little stutter, and I realize all my shit's back. The panic and then relief that happened <laughs> right there was... Uh, yeah, that was a lot of adrenaline. God, I'm such a nerd, huh? <laughs> Alright, that's all we need. And <laughs> so, uh, originally I was, this whole swim jumping thing came about on accident because I was finishing a speed run and I was so close to being a dork's time and I knew I could kind of do that, that was before I was using swim jumping all the time and uh, I, I was just like, I can't, I don't have time, I can't go up those stairs so I just tried it out and I basically did like a perfect swim jump up to the top and that saved me just enough time to beat his record by like 30 seconds or not even that but uh, yeah, so the theory was that by doing a swim jump up here, it was just quicker, you skip the little cutscene, but now I'm starting to go so fast when I'm doing them that I'm going so damn high above the ship that uh, it doesn't actually save me time sometimes. Again, I would love it if you could just, you know, have a quick crafting option that pops up whenever you walk up to here, but that is not a thing on PC. Luckily, they do pop into your hands if you have them in your inventory, though, so that's nice. That's not where that goes, Speedy. Alright, that's it. We just have to hit these last, like, five, six, seven buttons, and then we're gone. And luckily there was no storm overhead or anything that prevented me from just leaving. That's always such a shame when you do a whole speed run and then you just have to sit there and wait for a storm to finish.
Now, back whenever me and a Gork started fighting for records, he said that if I did a random world speedrun, he would also do a speedrun. So, a Gork, you're up to the plate, man. Time for you to do one of these. Good luck. <laughs> All right, next action when we launch the plane is where we stop the clock, and that will be it. And that's it. One hour, 16 minutes-ish. I don't actually have the exact time right up in front of me, but yeah. Not a bad time for no knowledge of the world at all, or anything, really. I always think this is interesting whenever you're crossing uh, the path of one of these giant ships. Look at that. We almost hit that mast of that ship. That was crazy. Alright, and with that, we have completed the normal difficulty random world speedrun. So if you guys enjoyed that, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again for the next speedrun or deep play episode. Keep on surviving.